Let's talk about another interesting character in Mesopotamian myth, the Anzu bird. So the Anzu bird is also called Zu or Imdugud. It's always desired power greater than the gods, and it's rep that's represented in a lot of the myths that it is um, talked about in. So it's conceived by Cirrus, which is the son of the goddess Ninkaji. So in one of the tab in one of the tablet myths, right? It steals the Tablet of Destinies from Enlil, and the Tablet of Destinies is basically um, an object that is supposed to have all futures written on it. So basically, if you have the Tablet of Destinies, you control everything, right? Because you know how everything turns out. Um, and then, so it... So the Anzu bird steals the Tablet of Destinies from Enlil and is later killed by Ninurta, which I also have a, another uh, video on in the same playlist, the Gods and Goddesses playlist. So Anzu was supposed to guard the tablets, but decided to steal them instead. So originally, its, its job was to guard the tablets, but then it was like, I'm going to take these for myself. Um, so there's another version of the same myth um, in the later Babylonian period where Marduk is the one that kills the Anzu bird. So we can really see here, um, and I've discussed this before in some of my videos, where you have uh, attributes or tales that are attributed to one um, deity or god or significant figure. And then as that figure kind of falls in popularity, the next figurehead or the next deity that's being revered takes over that story and we see a lot of this in a lot of stories that have to do with um religion and spirituality and such as culture changes even throughout time so let's see here's a quote from the uh from the story of the anzu bird right i shall take the god's tablets a tablet of destinies for myself, and control the orders for all the gods, and shall possess the throne and be master of the rites. I shall direct every one of the Igigi. He plotted opposition in his heart, and at the chamber entrance from which he often gazed, he waited for the start of the day. While Enlil was bathing in the holy water, stripped and with his crown laid down on the throne, he gained the tablet of destinies for himself, took away the Enlil power, rites were abandoned, Anzu flew off and went into radiance, faded, silence reigned. So, and we see this also a lot in, in a lot of stories, even, um, you'll find this in a lot of Greek myths, where when a god is either distracted or just off doing their own thing, they often get bamboozled. So, let's see. The Anzu bird itself is described as a massive bird that could breathe fire and water. Some, some um, sources that I researched actually attribute the Anzu bird with an early depiction of a phoenix. And um, it's also depicted as a lion-headed eagle. You'll find a lot of monsters actually have the head of a lion. It's kind of interesting. Um, Humbaba actually has the head of a lion in, uh, according to some of the, um, the tablets and tales and stuff. And stuff. So in one tale, the Anzu bird took took the Umsimi, which is translated as crown and creative force from Anu. So you can tell that the Anzu bird really it's it's a usurper. It wants to take stuff that's not its own for its own. It wants power that other deities have, other entities have, and it does not. So in another myth, Lugobanda, whose name translates to young fierce king, and by the way, he's um, Gilgamesh's father, who's supposed to be the second king of Uruk after the Great Flood, and supposedly the son of Shamash, so actually Gilgamesh is a grandson of Shamash, um, feeds the Anzu's baby. So Lugobanda actually gives food to the Anzu bird's baby, and the Anzu bird is actually so grateful that he grants him the ability to travel at super speed. It's kind of interesting. Um, so the Anzu bird also appeals, appears in the tale of Inanna and the Hulupu tree. And by the way, the Hulupu tree, if I've never mentioned this before, is actually supposed to be a fig tree. So the tree of life, um, technically, or by one attribution, the Mesopotamian attribution through that one um, tale is actually a fig tree. And um, so the Anzu bird took residence in the fig, in the fig tree, in the Hulupu tree, um, and Inanna did not like that. 
So in this particular tale, the Anzu bird is depicted as a vulture, and there's some discussion about whether or not the name Anzu was just att attached to this particular annoying bird, or if it actually was the Anzu bird. There's like a debate there. Um, so the Anzu bird was also known to generate storms with its wings and bring water and fire from its mouth. And um, Samuel Kramer, who has done a truckload of research, and um, you can find a lot of books on Mesopotamian myths by Kramer, um, particularly in my research of Inanna back in the day when I was making Lama Dudinger over there, uh, Kramer was a great resource. And um, so, as I was saying, the, Kramer actually translates Anzu as owl. So really, is it a giant bird? Does it have a lion head? Is it a vulture? Is it an owl? We don't exactly know. But the big thing here is <clears throat> that the Anzu bird is one that it clearly takes stuff that it's not supposed to take. It's a very jealous bird. It's also demonstrated to be a kind of a barrier crosser, some some annoying being that does things and is in different places that it shouldn't be. So the Anzu bird can really teach us about like where the lines are and when we are being selfish and just when we are doing things we really shouldn't be doing. So the Anzu bird is a rather interesting thing to research and, and to look into. So let me know what you guys think about this. You can always put stuff down below in the comments. You can connect with me on my Facebook group and even through my email, which you can find at the end of this video for some people that are always like, what's your email? It's down there and it's right after this. Good hunting. Thanks for watching my video. So if you want to check out my playlists, I have, among others, the Simon Necronomicon, the Tree of Life, General Magic, Tulpomancy, a playlist on my books, the Elements, Stones, the Theories that Govern Magic, and the Gods and Goddesses of Mesopotamia. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Movement, which is an update and expansion upon Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Mastery, which is a combination masterwork of Magical Theater and Magical Mechanics, and The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at priestofthenecro at gmail.com, and you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.